pull the string. Pull the string! Scurly, wow, wow, wow. Hi, area backstage. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Kelly from Goldfinger, and you're watching Bay Area Backstage Live. What the hell do you know you say as you turn your face right back to me? What the hell do you know you say like some righteous man better than me? Well, I'm down, and you're killing me. Well, I'm down. Still you mean nothing Let's fucking do this! What the hell do you know you say? What the hell do you know you say? Kelly Lemieux from the band Goldfinger, and we're here at the 2013 Vans Warp Tour. We're in the back of the bus. Cold chilling. Seattle, Portland, uh, San Diego, two in Pomona, Mountain View is where we are today. And then we're going to go to Ventura tomorrow, and then we are, uh, Goldfinger, we're only doing the West Coast. Um, as soon as it starts getting hot, we're all later. So um, we're finishing up tomorrow, but the show's been great. Um, we're playing kind of late tonight, but it'll be nice and cool, so I'm not worried. And um, yeah, it's been good. It's, 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 there's not as much free time as you think. Um, I was hoping to get, um, I'm in the process of learning some other songs for a guitar summer camp I'm doing with uh, Mr. Paul Gilbert. And um, he's given me about eight hours of material to learn and I have been listening to it while I'm sleeping because I've not had a moment to uh, to do that because it's just kind of chaotic if you're not try standing in line for two hours to eat you're doing press you're doing something you're watching your friends so it's pretty hectic out here but um home stretch baby still I always try to play with some finesse even though you might not be able to tell, but um, I, I'm always trying to play with some finesse. I, I don't play, I don't play, I kind of like to let my amp do the work, you know, like when you hammer, you let the hammer do all the work. I like to let the amp do all my work. So my action on my bass is usually, with Goldfinger, we tune down a half step just for vocals. And you can tell the monitors were a little rough the first two or three shows. My voice is a little scratchy, but um, we got them dialed in now. But we tune down a half step, so we get, so it's a lot easier to do harmonies and stuff. And um, with Paul, I turn in, in standard tuning, and I tend to play with my fingers more with Paul. So, um, yeah, I got my action kicked down way low with Paul because I got to do some crazy stuff. And then with Goldfinger, it's mostly with a pick, punk, ska, rock, a little bit of reggae I'll use my fingers for. But um, 
Yeah, man, I'm, I'm all about cranking my amp and not playing super hard because that's how you start cramping up. Steve Harris does that too, I found out. He plays his action super low, really light touch. He's just tickling the bass. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the deal. I mean, I, my action's a little bit higher with Goldfinger because I dig in a little bit harder, but for the most part, that's kind of what I'm going to go with. 90% of everybody's tone is in their brain, through their blood and their bones and their muscle, through their fingers. Into, I mean, you can take, I think you can take anybody, any musician, put them on a different instrument and you'll still go, I mean, a different amp or guitar, like whatever they're, like you could take any, like Eddie Van Halen, you could put him on anything and it'd still sound like Eddie Van Halen. It's, that's his signature, but as far as my tone, um, I was a big Mesa Boogie guy for a while, and um, I love their amps, but I just, they never had any backline for me whenever I'd go to Japan or anywhere, and I um, switched over to Aguilar now, and I've known Dave and Justin over there for a long time, and they're awesome, awesome, amazing dudes. I knew them before they were even there. They used to work at the LA Bass Exchange. Um, great guys, the, the, uh, the, the amps are amazing, they make... Um, well, they make preamps. They're known for their preamps. They're making pickups now, pedals. Um, so I love their amps. They're, I'm using them tonight. I'm using them on the Warped Tour. I used them in Japan. Um, love their amps um, and cabinets. And then I use generally use Seymour Duncan in like a lot of my custom stuff. I'll use Duncan's. Um, everybody at Duncan is amazing. I've met Seymour multiple times, and his uh, well, I think it's his ex-wife Kathy runs it, and they're the nicest people and they're awesome awesome gear so that's kind of an ernie ball strings love the ernie ball strings um i've been using the the cobalts the five string and i'm i'm playing all five string now i put the four string down so i'm rocking the low b no honestly the weird thing is is i've always 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 been attracted to bass even when I was a little kid. Um, it's funny, I would say like the, the, the band at my age bracket that made me go, awesome is the one that's the patch on your shirt right there. <laughs> so we're probably similar in age somewhat, I would imagine. And um, the, I just always remember like listening to Kiss Alive 1 and Kiss Alive 2 and, 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 and hearing that doo, doo, I'm like, what is that? It sounded like Godzilla waking up. You know what I mean? It was like a giant electric industrial bullfrog. That just that whole like, blah. And, it's, and, and, and I remember when I was a, a, a wee lad, um, I'd go to the music stores and um, you know how they have the guitars hanging on the wall? And I would walk up and, and I, he'd, you know, just kind of ring. I'd strum the guitars and go. And then there'd be a bass. I remember there's just like, it was like a, like a, a blue, like a, almost like a baby blue Fender Precision bass, I think it was, which I'd love to have. And I remember walking up to that one and going, hitting the string, and it was all, boom, and the wall, just everything would rattle, even acoustically. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. And it's funny too, but the thing about bass is like, I think like the layman, like people don't even realize how cool bass is. They don't even notice the bass until it's gone. And they're like. Hey, where'd that one sound go? And everything's just like, transistor. And I, I think, you know, people just don't realize how cool the bass is. And it's like, I, I, I dare you, I dare you to get a guitar cabinet, get a 412 guitar cabinet and, a, and an 810 bass cabinet. Lay that 810 on its side, plug it in through whatever amp loud. Have, have, have anybody, maybe a female, sit on that guitar amp play a big G chord and then have them sit down on that bass amp and just have somebody just hit a big E. Blue. People are going to want to, especially the, girl, the girls, the ladies, they're going to want to sit on that bass amp. So that's all I got to say about that. I have, um, I actually use on 99 Red Balloons, I have a Dunlop, which I love the Dunlop stuff too. Plug, Scott, you cheetah. Get in. Um, I have a, uh, an envelope filter that I use and I love all that. Wow. Wow, I'm a big, I love like funk stuff. Like when, I, when I'm when i at home, I, I'll put on like Pandora or whatever. And I put on like the funky meters 
and just or you know Freddie King and 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 uh, all the Kings um, and and listen to that stuff, Miranda King, and um, I'm a I'm a big fan of like being a bass player, Bootsy, um, just uh, James Brown. I mean, you know, come on, make it funky now. I love it. I'd love to play in a funk band. That first band I was in with John, the Electric Love Hogs, was metal, and we had some funk stuff because I was like, let's do some funk. So, yeah, yeah, I, I've definitely messed with, I like pedals, but, you know, compression and, and a little bit of Mutron. Mutrons are so expensive and big now, though, they take up so much room. You can get a nice little doodad that big. So, yeah, I love that stuff. Um, I can get my turban on. Um, the future, I mean, for me, it seems to be touring. Um... I just moved back up to Portland, Oregon, and um, I'll sit in with, I got friends bands that play, I'll, I'll sit in playing stand-up bass. My, you know, I, I like to, uh, I have my, my niche, my forte of what I do. I'm kind of a rock. I can do the rock, I can do the punk, I can do the funk, I can do the blues. I play country, I played upright in some country bands, and um, I just like to stay as well-rounded as I can, you know, and, and, you know, my, my, right now my biggest regrets are that, um, I didn't learn how to read music and play jazz because I'm doing this summer camp with Paul, which is a nice Paul Gilbert, who I also play with, and he's got this jazz artist on there, Mimi Fox, who's from the Bay Area, shredding guitar player, and he's, and Paul's a rock guy too, he doesn't read, but he's clearly in the upper echelon of shred and um they sent me charts and 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 the tunes and it's just crazy like hard bebop stuff and i'm just like i i, I almost get i think i gave myself an ulcer like the last like up until about like three days ago paul just went to germany for a, a, a and i just sent him a text i'm like paul dude i I, I, if I would have known I had to play jazz, I, I don't know if I would have said yes to doing the camp. I can't. I'm not a jazz guy. I had, to admit, I had to admit defeat. And it was really, like, humbling. And, you know, I'm like, man, I don't play jazz. Kelly don't play jazz. I wish I did. I love it. I listen to it. I love Charles Mingus. But, um, you know, I guess I'm just a rock moron. Sorry. So um, I think we're going to try and figure that out. But... I have all these crazy songs, as I was telling you earlier, there's no time on this warp Tour. I have all these songs to learn, and I'm trying not to, like, when I think about it, I start getting palpitations, but when I go lay in my bunk at night, I put it, I have it, like, he burned me the CDs, and some of them are in different keys, and a lot of them are cover songs, and la la la, but it's like 31 tunes or something like that, and I'm just like, I fly back down to LA on the 5th of July, it's the 20th today, and then fly out to the Catskills for the camp. So, anyways, um, yeah, I try not to stress out about it. As soon as I get home to Portland, cram, 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 cram. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on. The future of music, man, you got me. Write a song for, com write some commercial jingles. I don't know. Get something on TV. Get something on the, you know. Does anybody listen to radio anymore? I, I mean, I do, but it's like, I listen to classic rock or jazz i like to listen to jazz as long as it's not the crazy bebop i can't drive when i'm listening to bebop <laughs> so i like i mean i'm just i'm touring that's what i do i'm playing live i just did six weeks with paul we're doing this warp tour goldfinger um we're actually we just recorded we just tracked three new songs one of the songs you can check out it's called am i deaf if you go to goldfingermusic.com um, that's on there, and it's actually really good. I like it. Loving my bass tone on it. I remember, it. um, I remember the Alamo. Um, I remember actually using a bass amp. Usually everybody's all straight Pro Tools with, uh, John's engineer. John wasn't even there. It was Tom and I, the engineer. I've done so much recording with John, I'm like, he doesn't even show up, um, which is good and bad. But, um, Tom, we actually set up a little amp egg. Not an Aguilar, I didn't have one there. But John had a little flip top amp egg, like B15. We set it up, got a ton. I mean, we spent like an hour getting bass sounds, which I have not done in probably three records. 
It was already like, okay, I got your tone, let's go. Occasionally I'd go back and go add a little more grind to that. And then I used a, um, I used a Fender five string precision on it. I have a, um, I just got a, a new Fender five P bass, which is awesome. I love it. And um, it sounds and plays great. And um, I used that on the session and honestly, even Charlie came up to me afterwards. He's like, dude, that is one of the best bass tones you've had on a record. I'm like, yeah, Tom and I sat down and like notched out a good little bass tone out of it. So, and I used, I used to pick on it. And it took me like an hour to track, you know, it was fun. Just go in and listen to it a few times and tracked it down and uh, came out great. I like it. I'm honestly, we rehearsed it and we haven't played it once. And I'm like, dude, it sounded so good at rehearsal. So. Um, I think we'll play it. We're looking at doing South America in October. And we have some fly-out dates. Um, I think we're doing Rob Zombie's got a thing. He does uh, in L... Is it in L.A.? He does like a whole week, like a Halloween week. And we're doing that coming up. And uh, we're playing in Quebec with The Offspring, I think. Am I supposed to say that? I think it's okay to say it now. If not, then I don't know what we're talking about. Um... That's, I think it's all, paperwork's all signed and everything's good. Um, that's, it's a festival in, um, I think it's a Rimouski, Quebec. Quebec, Quebec. And we're doing that and just fly out dates. Kids, you'd like advice for a touring musician? Well, I'm probably gonna say some stuff you, you're not gonna wanna do. But one of them, which is the hardest thing to do, is get a lot of sleep. Don't stay up all night raging, puking your guts out. You won't enjoy the time you're on stage, which is kind of what your whole day revolves around. Uh, it's really basic stuff. Get a lot of sleep. Try and eat healthy if you can. I'll pack, I go to Trader Joe's and I'll pack stuff and just put it in my bunk. Sometimes you get trapped at the airport and you're like, our flight's delayed. And you're like, I'm cool, I got trail mix. I got whatever healthy treat to have. That is key, sleep, water, which I need more of. Um, you know, don't do anything stupid to jeopardize your voice. If you're a singer, your hands. I mean, I used to drink a lot on tour. That's just why I can say from experience. And um, I came close to breaking my leg or my arm a number of times, falling downstairs inebriated. I had it from here to here my whole leg was purple for like three weeks. And then, I'm not kidding you, right here, it went away after two years. I had a permanent bruise from falling down the stairs at Irving Plaza. Not once, but twice when we were on tour with the Bloodhound Gang. Sponsored by Jägermeister. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, um, I mean, have fun for sure, but like, honestly, you gotta pace yourself. Really have to pace yourself. You know, if you wanna let loose a little bit towards the end of the tour, you know, whatever, just plenty of sleep. As far as getting to the touring part, practice your butt off, man. That's all I did, play, play, play. Play as much as you can, with as many people as you can, as many styles as you can. And um, always be nice. It's really hard when you're crabby and tired and you know, you just wanna eat like your plate of beans or whatever you're chewing on. And you know, all you want is like a cup of coffee or whatever. Um, just try and be nice because you know a lot of these people, they run in the same circles. And all you gotta do is bum out one person and it could be a long trip. You might have to take the back entrance just to get where you wanna go. So be nice, be courteous, be thoughtful, get your sleep, um, practice, 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 and take it seriously, but have fun. That's my advice. Honestly, you know what I did, and, and, and I think it's just the, it's just the age old thing that everybody seems to do. I would find the bass players that I liked, and I would try and cop what they were doing. I would even try and cop stuff from guitar players. I was a big Van Halen fan when I was a kid, and I never wanted to really be Michael Anthony. I wanted to sing like his backups like that. Um, but I always wanted, I always kind of took a little bit of Eddie Van Halen's riffage, but I would take, um, you know, musicians and artists that I love and, and try and emulate. Now, don't rip them off and be a clone. 
that guy's already known for what he does. But, you know, play what you love to play. Um, and, it, you know, as long as you love to play, you'll, you'll find your way, you know. Um, if you want to learn how to read music and play jazz, learn how to read music and play jazz. If you only want to play punk rock, listen to the punk rock you love, cop those bass lines. You know, um, my biggest thing with, like, bass students and stuff is... They don't use their pinky. Try to use all four of your fingers when you are playing. It will make your life much easier. I see a lot of guys, one finger and two finger and three finger and use all of your fingers. Use all your fingers. Listen to as many people and as many styles as you can is what I try to do. Some of it, if I don't like it, I'll still listen to it a little bit and go, oh, that's interesting. I don't understand like a lot of the te Tejano bass lines. Do, 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 do. They have like weird, I'm like, where's the accent? I can't find the one, help me. Um, you know, maybe try to learn some of that stuff. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit. I know Paul took me out of my comfort zone a few times and made me a better player, gave me like total agita and like, ah, and freaked me out. And, I'm, and, and, and uh, I still get freaked out, you know? Especially this day and age where everybody's got a camcorder or a, or a cell phone and they're like this. You can't even afford to have a bad show anymore. So you better be on your game because that shit's going to get on YouTube. I'm sure there's some stuff of me effing up left and right. So, um, yeah, man, get your, get your hand, your finger posturing down. Learn your notes as, as well as you can. And, um, you know, enjoy what you do. Have fun. If it's not fun, don't do it, you know? It's music, have fun. And then, you know, maybe take a business course. Might come in handy. I know Duff from Guns N' Roses did. I think he ended up buying stock in this little company, Starbucks and Apple, and I think he's doing okay. Anyways, use your brain, kids, use it. Hey y'all, this is Kelly from Goldfinger. We're here with uh, Bay Area Backstage Live. Check out this video.
Beautiful people here on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. And tonight, it is my job to wake you the fuck up, people! This song goes out to all you people who hate your fucking school, hate your fucking parents, I just want out! Alright! This one's called Wasted! Well, I'm wasted again Past I don't know who I am So wasted again Like I don't know where I've been Who I am Get the fuck up you guys! Fucking insane concert! Holy shit! Hang out with us, buddy! Come on! We're here to have a good time and party with friends, right? Here we go! I'm wasting again. I don't know who I am. You're a good dancer. So I just
Christ the humanoid. Intruder alert, intruder alert. Yelda, intruder.